Check out this winter squash. Yikes. And the sweet corn behind it. Sammy's out here harvesting. I think he's picking okra right now. But I thought the sunflowers looked really pretty. Thought you'd enjoy seeing them. And we'll go up to Sammy and see what he's up to. Has been running by. Check out these sunflowers. Aren't they pretty? <laughs> Gorgeous. Especially the ones with the red in the middle. Anything you want to say, Sammy? Uh, you want to discuss okra? Let's talk okra. Let's talk about okra. <laughs> Well, I'm picking okra today. We've been we were delayed yesterday because of rain. This is what we're after. And you got to pick okra every other day. But we're a day off, so the pods are a little big. You don't want them too big because they get fibrous. Not much bigger than that. That's prime okra right there. Okay. That size. That's what okra lovers are looking at. And this right here, you can see okra makes a beautiful flower. Let me get a close up of that. Oh yeah, that's pretty. See, it's already flowered this morning. They flower in the morning, and then by the at evening they close up and they're done. Then they go on to another flower. But every other day, they're a member of the Malvasi family. Hibiscus in in that family. That's why they're pretty. See, if you open them up, they got there's red in there. Pretty. They're cool. Yeah, they are. Very pretty. But you don't want to. You don't want too big of a pod because they get fibrous and they're not good to eat then. They're they're nasty. Uh -huh. So you got to get get them eh, three or four inches is about as far as you want to go. If it's been real wet, you can go a little bit further, but not right now. But I'm gonna finish picking this, and then we will pick squash. Now you can see. I don't know if you remember our previous tour. I'll narrate a little bit here. This is the winter squash. On our last tour, it was small. But uh, it's small done anymore. better. <laughs> it's not it's, small anymore. It's like a jungle in there. It's moving right along. There's uh, what they call kashaws here. There's one you can see. Wait. Let me get a picture of him. There he is. The older folks at church like them. They make pumpkin pies out of them. And... Uh, one guy loves this thing called Kushaw pudding, and I've never had it, but it uh, looks like, from what I'm seeing in here, he'll be having some this year. Yeah. And then we got the Blue Hubbard squash, which is next. I'm sure you can easily see where it begins. <laughs> and then two rows of butternut squash, and then a row of acorn squash. <laughs> and in the background, you can see the corn. It's starting, it's, it's senescing now. The nest means get old. You know, you can. Some of you younger folks can tell your parents you're starting to senesce. <laughs> I'm sure they'll love you for it. And then the next corn down below, and right at the edge of the winter squash, that's Marcy's sweet corn. It's uh, tasseling. It's pollinating now. Some of it blew down a little of the weaker pieces, but that's not really going to affect our yield. I'll just mow them over. I don't care. And. Uh, and in about a week, 10 days, maybe two weeks, we'll be going through there. That's a hybrid corn called Silver Queen. And uh, need to get on that side. Of hybrids mean all the plants in the field are genetically the same. So they all ripen at the same time. Not like open pollinated, which will ripen over a longer period. So when it's ready, you get it. And uh, I'm loving the sunflowers. Yeah, the sunflowers are really cool, aren't they? Uh-huh. All right. You, now, you got to remember, if you want to save the seed off of sunflowers, you got to, once they're pollinated and whatnot, you got to put cheesecloth or something around them because the little goldfinch birds will come and they'll clean you out because they like them. They're nice little birds, but they they get they got big appetite. All right, I'm going to go back to harvesting. Okay, go ahead. Now, picking okra is real easy. First, I make me a picking bucket like this. This is a flower pot. I put duct tape around the hole so it doesn't fall off, and I put a plant hanger on it. This hooks on the belt, so I've got both hands free. These gloves are a must because 
like I mentioned in an earlier video, and I will always emphasize, okra has little spines at the base of the pods. They're not much to look at, but after picking about 20 feet a row, you'll feel them because they will wear out the tips of your fingers and you will be uncomfortable. So you wear the little gloves. The procedure is you go through here and the plant is itchy. It's like stick, working them around insulation. And you find one. That's a good size. I got leaves everywhere. I know. Like or... this. Okay. And you push your finger, snap, crackle, pop, it's done. Then you just go on to the next one. The good part about it is, right now you don't have to bend over. Because if you're an old man like me, you don't want to bend over any more than you have to. It, for one thing, it hurts, and another, it's somewhat undignified. <laughs> anyway, I'll be done with this shortly, and we'll move on to squash. But now we're going to pick summer squash. We got the weird little kids, we got zucchini and yellow squash. Now these, we're starting out with the weird little kids. Right here is where the first planting is, going that way. That's the first planting. Mm -hmm. I plant two plantings. This is the second planting. Usually, the first planting is starting to senesce <laughs> about the time the second planting starts to kick in and it is a little bit but we've had plenty of moisture and I gave them a little extra fertilizer so they're they're still being pretty strong so they're overlapping so that means more squash now um, one of the things that's important that you should always have on your person when you go to the garden are hand pruners this is like John Wayne's six gun <laughs> you got to have this. And get the cool hol holster too so you look bona fide. Yeah, you're bona fide. That means official. <laughs> anyway, some of the squash has a thin little stem on it. You can twist those off, but the zucchini has a thick stem and you need a knife or your pruners Pruner. to get them in. And plus, you know, there's going to be something somewhere that's fallen down and gotten in your way. And rather than damage, cause too much damage, you just slice and dice. But required, required tool. That and a pocket knife. All anyway, right. which one are you going to do first? Here's some of our weird little kids under here. This one's too big. I don't like it. So don't. It goes, oh, I hate when he throws them away. away. Oh. No one's going to be able to do anything with that. It's nasty, love. It's oh, I don't know. It, it's not going to waste. It's going back into the ground to feed next year's stuff. <laughs> I'm weird. Now, see, we found stuff that's more amenable. Okay. Summer squash, you don't want too big unless you're one of those folks who make zucchini bread and all that stuff. Yeah. And we're a little behind on our harvest, so I'm sure we'll find that too. Yeah, we had rain all day yesterday. So. Yeah, like this one. I, let me see if I can get down in there. This one here is probably eh, kind of hard to get at this angle. This oh, was, wow. Yeah, that's a bigger this one. This one here, it's another one of the weird little kids. Yeah, it's a little bit... I guess you could eat it, but I wouldn't. Not when I got others. And here's another one of the weird little kids. You just take this. Remember, when you harvest, one of the things you want to bear in mind is not to damage the plant when you're harvesting. you got to harvest in a manner that is as gentle as you can be with the plants because if you want them to keep producing, if you don't, just, uh, you know, after you're done, cut them off with your pruners. And get you a good pair of pruners, too. Spend the money and get you something nice. Now many of you can see why Sammy is always out here. Now the leaves on the summer squash plant are like okra leaves. They got little spines all over them, especially on the back side of the leaves. Uh -huh. They got tiny little thorns. Some people like long sleeve shirts. I can't get comfortable in that. And uh, so if I was picking for market, I would be wearing gloves right now and make sure your fingernails are cut because it's in on the squat, summer squash is very thin, easy to damage with fingernails. 
So if I was picking for market, because people eat with their eyes first, which I still can't figure out how that saying is true when it comes to raw oysters, <laughs> but but it's true. People do eat with their eyes first most of the time, so you got to have it look good, and then then they go for it. Okay. All right. So I'll stop here till we get to the next plant. Okay. Now we're picking cucumbers. I like them growing on a fence. Does a lot of good things. Makes it easy to pick. Makes it save a lot of space and makes good quality cucumbers. If they grow on the ground you get one you get what they call yellow bellies on them which are uh, you know the yellow belly. We got a few that grow on the yeah, ground. Yeah a couple. But they grow up here they're like sausages hanging out. Let's see one hanging. Yeah see oh, there's yeah. one. There he is. Right below it there's another one. This is the first planting headed this way and down beyond here is the second planting. Same philosophy as the squash. How much would you say we've gotten out of this so far if you had to guess? <sighs> out of the first planting? A thousand pounds. Oh my gosh. I know it's it's a high yield that's for sure. Yeah. There's a lot of a lot of our friends are making pickles and yeah. this year. <laughs> yeah a lot. <laughs> yeah. A lot. Yeah. <laughs> But, it's but good. they're so good, they're not bitter. That's what I like about them. Now, this variety is an old-time variety. As a matter of fact, it's called uh, Poinsett 76. Show the little spines on there if you have one. All right, hang on. I thought that was kind of interesting. Something I didn't know about cucumbers when they're growing. The Lord has equipped the cucumbers with little spines like this. They're not much of a threat to humans. They're, they don't hurt. They feel like a little bumps of sand, and they come off real easy. So you take them, and you just kind of go like this before you put them in the bucket. That way they don't poke one another and help maintain the integrity of the skin, which is all important in preventing rot. So we go by here, and we pick cucumbers and pick cucumbers, and then we stack them like cordwood in the kitchen. Yeah. And... Like a five-gallon bucket every other day, right? Yeah. Well, last time I picked, I got a almost bucket two buckets. Yeah. Yeah. But they're starting to they're starting to wane a little bit. I, I gave them a little extra boost of fertilizer before before the uh, one down rain. Here that I'm gonna grab. Now that one you might see a yellow belly on. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. So I want to show them. Yeah. See? Yeah, there he is. There's the yellow belly. Cause see. He, this is one that was hanging on the fence, look. See, uh -huh. uniform all the way around for the most part. This is one that was on the ground, got a yellow belly. Uh -huh. Still just as good. Oh yeah, you know, if you were if you were Stevie Wonder, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. <laughs> what? Look at this one. Stevie Wonder appreciates good vegetables, I'm sure. I better... This is kind of addicting, picking these. Cause I thought it easy to see, but once you start picking them, then it's like... I gotta keep going and going. All right, I'm cutting this off till we get to the next veggie. All right. And now we go to everyone's favorite tomatoes. <laughs> now you might have seen our tomato planting video and the stringing video. Tomatoes are popular. If somebody's growing a veggie plant or something like that, just nine times out of ten they're growing a tomato. But anyway, we're getting a lot of them. <laughs> now. As you can see, they've exceeded the height of their support, and they're flowing over like a waterfall. Yeah, they really are. It looks kind of raggly, but it'll still be productive. So, I mean, my goodness, how many tomatoes can one? I know. Can one have? Well, we'll have plenty, and enough to share with anybody that wants them. But let's go pick some. Now, yesterday, if you saw our short video, you know it was raining. We do not mess with the plants particularly tomatoes when they are wet that means harvest after lunch after the dew is burned off you know prune them same thing so they're very susceptible that's what you see here some fungus diseases that's early blight I believe but what I'll do is after I harvest these usually harvest every other day every third day Tomorrow I will spray these with fungicide and probably a little bit of insecticide, though I don't see any 
insect insect problems. Insect pressure has been very light this year because we had a hard winter last year, and I think that knocked down the population a bit. But anyway, you can see our gorgeous red sunflowers uh -huh. over there. They're red like blood, it, and they mixed in with the yellows and all. I love the sunflowers. I do too. I'd love to get a close up of the veggies. The veggies feed the body, and the flowers feed the soul. Look, there's hummingbirds up there. Look over there. Where? They're right there. Oh, I see them. See them? There's hummingbirds. So they, they attract our some not, of our. Not sure if I got them on film. But. Beneficial insect friends, and they're just groovy. I just like them. I don't care, you know. Anyway. Yeah, let's get back to let's tomatoes. get back to picking some <laughs> tomatoes. This video will be hours long. These were started from seed that I had saved from last year and we got nice yellow ones oh those are nice don't you think they're a little small no no well you those would cover a sandwich in one slice now some of them you have Doodle to stop licking me some of them you have to use your hand pruners to to remove to avoid damaging the plant some of them, and when you use your hand pruners in this situation, be careful not to cut the strings that are supporting oh. the plant, because then you then you're embarrassed, and you make you say bad things about people's moms. <laughs> and uh, oh, look at that one! That's huge. But see? Oh my gosh, it's huge. It, this one in a, two or three days will be perfect. See, this has green shoulders. You see people setting tomatoes in the windowsill for sun to ripen. They ripen in darkness, baby. Don't put them in the sun. <laughs> As you can see, this is the top part of the plant where it attaches. This is where the sun would be. Where is it not ripe? Where the sun is shining. Where is it ripe? Where the shade was. You know, yeah, a lot figure of, that's it out. That's a, a common misconception. People think they yeah, need to Yeah, now we'll move along though. to some others. We got a few red tomatoes. I forget the name of this variety. I think oh, they're beautiful. I think it might be Boxcar Willie. It's an old time. That's the name of it? Yeah. Oh, nice. But I, I like to pick them at this stage, and then we set them in, in the kitchen, kitchen counter downstairs where it's cool and dry and shady. And in a day or two, they'll be, they'll be perfecto. Okay. But let's go see the weird tomatoes. Okay. See, we got big pinks here. Wow. Wow. Oh my gosh! And I made like I had enough for ten quarts of tomato sauce yesterday. See, that's a good that's a good yield there. Yeah. That's what you want. Notice I prune all the leaves off that are touching the ground. When they over when they flow over like a waterfall and they get close to the ground, you use these. You don't let them touch the ground. Now this is an interesting variety. It got a lot of uh, attention at church today. Uh huh called whoops there went one i'll get him these are called opalka opalka i believe it's a a russian descent they're really groovy they're very meaty they're good to make sauces and uh dried tomatoes things like that like you would most people do with the italian types the romas and the viva italias Mm -hmm. But I like these better because they're bigger. Mm -hmm. And thrown with sufficient force, they make excellent projectiles. Mm. Anyway, so we have those and we have the big pinks and the red. And Marcy will show you what I've got to pick. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm scanning down these through. These get picked every, every other day or every third day at the latest. And these are my favorites. They're, they're, as you can see, these plants are more susceptible to fungus. Yeah, these aren't. These are, the, these are the blacks. And they're really cool. When you let these ripen a few days, they get a dark, pinkish, blackish, gray, green color. And when you cut them open, they look like you're cutting open a heart. <laughs> they're, they're, they look like a, some kind of organ in there. And people, if you put them on a plate next to other tomatoes, they'll think these are rotten, but they're not. They're, no, they're good. very good. They're very flavorful. Yeah, they're good. I love the blacks. There's another one. Doodle, stop licking. Nice. They're real cool. 
and they dry out beautifully. They make yeah. it real dark. And I'll show you some of the cherries, and then we'll be done with the tomatoes. Okay. Is that yeah, I'm walking off about along. Tomatoes. Rows and rows and rows of tomatoes. We only got 48 plants. If you watched <laughs> our video before. Well, we've been sharing with a lot of people. We've, I've even had someone call me and ask me when we were bringing more tomatoes back. See, this sure. is a nice big pink. That's nice. And the neat thing about these old-time varieties is there's not a lot of water in them. Like around where the, the seed is, yeah. there's, there's cavities that have like jello or water in them. Yeah. There's not so much in these. Most no. of it's meat. And that, that's what Marcy likes to make her groovy, yummy tomato sauce. Yeah, and, made a lot and, yesterday. Yes, she did. And she's going to, looks like she's going to. Yeah, looks like I'm going to make some more. It's a good thing Lorraine gave you all those jars. Yes, thank you, Lorraine. Yes, Lorraine, Culbertson. To Lorraine Culbertson. Lorraine Culbertson loaded me up with jars today after church. And I can't thank her enough because I was running a little low, as you can imagine. Anyway, Now these God are a little. Her. Here, get a picture of that. Ooh, that's, that's pretty. These are our little pink cherry tomatoes. They're bigger than most. Now, one thing you notice about tomatoes, some varieties are more... See how it's cracked? Uh -huh. What that is, that's a response to being dry and then getting water. And then it swells up and it can't... It swells up faster than its skin can keep up with and it cracks. But if you uh -huh. get it like this, it's okay to eat. But see, this is better. Yeah. See, no cracks. Some varieties are more su susceptible than others. And my favorite little cherry tomato is what I call the ping pong balls. These are cute little. Oh, they're almost white. Yeah, I, they are. They're, I, they're like little ghost cherry tomatoes. These are my they're favorite good, ones. They're good though. Yeah, they're good. I call them ping pong balls. Cause, but they're cool. Anyway, I'm gonna get to picking. Unless you want to see some peppers, you want to see some peppers? Yeah, why not? Okay, might as well. Well, I'm pi I'm still picking. Now we now we come to the peppers. Peppers are cool because you don't have to pick them really on a schedule unless you want to. Because they start off, all the peppers generally start off as green. Some of them go to yellow. Some of them go to orange. But they all generally end up as red. A red pepper is mature. They have sweeter, more richer flavor than the green ones do. So we'll look in here and see what we can see. These are little green bell peppers. Uh -huh. They're a little small, but if you want to, if I wanted a few for a salad, I'd come down here and pick them. I put some in the sauce yesterday. Oh yeah. And some of the purple ones too. Now these here are kind of cayenne pepper. Hot. Yeah, they're purple cayennes which will turn to red when they're mature. And then we dry these and you grind them up and it's that stuff that you see at Pizza Hut that's in that, like a sugar dispenser jar mm -hmm. that heats up your pizza. <coughs> <laughs> he did it again. I did not. Look, see, look under oh. here. See, we got nice oh. bell peppers. Sorry. Oh yeah, that's a nice one. Complete with fly. Yeah. And here, we have my favorite bell peppers, the purple bells. These go from green to almost a black kind of purple, uh -huh. and then they turn red. Now, when I save the seeds from these, I'll let them turn red and get almost half rotten before I pick them, because then I know the seeds are mature and they're ready to be put away for the winter. Uh -huh. But I started all these from little plants <laughs> when there was a foot of snow on the ground. Mm -hmm. And these are our Hungarians. They're banana pepper, but they're not sweet. They're kind of zesty. They're about half as hot as a jalapeno. And the plants are extremely high yielding. So if you want to, uh, if you want to grow these at your house, if it's just for an average family, grow no more than two or three. Yeah. Because you will have a lot. I can pick half this thing full off of two plants. Mm -hmm. And of course, we've got a few jalapenos. Jose likes the jalapenos. Jose likes the jalapenos. <laughs> these, are, these are quite beautiful this, this yeah, year. Yeah, they really are. They, they've done real well. 
Makes me want poppers. Every time I see them, I think of jalapeno poppers. They're mm. beautiful. Yeah, they are. They're real good when they're red, too, because then they're mature and they have a more sweeter, less acidic kind of flavor. So I just let a few go. Okay. And these, these are a, a, a black Hungarian. They're also kind of hot, but they're real good. Me and Holly discovered last year that if you just roast these a little bit in foil and just nibble them when they get soft, they're real good to have like a condiment with uh, burgers and steak and things like that. Are they like still that. spicy then? Yeah, but, yeah. They're, but they're not. They're not, they're not, not they won't burn you up. They'll, yeah. they'll just, uh, you know, give you a little flavor. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, sweet cherry peppers. See, you can see some of these have matured. Oh, yeah. They're sweet. Those are the kind you see in the salad bar mm -hmm. that you pick out and you just, you don't eat the seeds because they're bitter. But uh, those are good. And okay. we like them. Any? You pickle them and nibble on them when you're eating. Final words? Final words. <laughs> Marcy trying to Well, I don't want this to go too long. Anyway, I'm done. <laughs> So this is our late summer tour and harvest time. And I hope you all are having a good harvest and may God richly bless you and your family. Bye-bye.